Welcome to the Janice Project. Janice Project is a new YouTube channel here, and uh, what we're gonna be dealing with is we're going to be dealing with life, we're gonna be dealing with politics, we're gonna be dealing with religion, and we're gonna be dealing with pop culture and all of those things from a Christian worldview. Now, before we get going in the Janice Project, I do want to explain kind of our, our, our philosophy. Where are we going to go? And really, a lot of it is explained in the very logo of the channel. With the very logo of the channel, you'll see it's a stylized J, with an arrow pointing forward and an arrow kind of looping up and pointing up toward the back. Obviously the J stands for the Janus Project. The J also has a slight look to an S because a lot of times we're going to be dealing with the sovereignty of God in the situations of this world. Now I know that sounds extremely, extremely riveting. As we deal with these issues, you're going to be looking at it going, wow, well, I mean, oh man, it's a Christian talking about the sovereignty of God. How could this get any better? I just can't wait. Bear with me. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be covering the sovereignty of God in situations both past and present. As we look toward the future, we have to get our hope from somewhere. It's, it's a stressful world. It's a crazy world. It's a time where we look and we go, I have no idea what the world is going to, going to do tomorrow. I don't know what's going to explode. I don't know who's going to die. I, this is a crazy life we're living in this 2020 chaos. And I think that understanding the sovereignty of God is something that will bring us hope. I think it'll be something that encourages us. I think it's something that could give us a completely different outlook on the circumstances and situations that we see going on around us. Now, there may be times, because I like video games, I like board games, I like books, I have a very eclectic interest. There may be things we talk about that are not too serious. All right, uh, from the look at the shelves behind me, you'll probably see I have a, a passing interest in Warcraft. All right, I enjoy The Legend of Zelda. I enjoy Fallout, I enjoy Starcraft. I enjoy a lot of these games. They're fun. Doesn't mean I agree with absolutely everything that's in them. Don't take that as a blanket endorsement. It's just something I enjoy. Those issues may come up. It may just be fun to talk about them. But the ultimate root of this channel is going to be in the sovereignty of God. Now, those two arrows are important. The first arrow is looking forward because that's where we have to look. I mean, we can look toward the past, we can imagine what could have happened different, but the fact is we can't do anything about it. As much as people would love to change history, there's nothing we can do about it. The people in the past, some of them were jerks. Some of them were louses. Do you know what we find out about people in the present? Some of them are jerks. Some of them are louses. I like the way Ecclesiastes puts it. The book of the Bible. There's nothing new under the sun. But the fact is, anyone we look at is going to have terrible things that they've done. They're going to have views that looked back on 30, 40, 100 years in the future are probably going to be pretty bad. And I think we need to make allowances that the people in the past were in the past. They did bad things. They did things that were not culturally acceptable. Now, they made a new culture. So I'm not going to excuse the wickedness that people do, but I am going to put it in the light of the culture. Put it in the light of the context that they lived. And so that's something that we can look at. So, so, so the J in Janus Project has that arrow pointing forward because that's where we have to look, but it also has the part that goes up and toward the back because we do have to look toward the sovereignty of God. We have to look toward God as we examine the past. And that's something we're going to do. Now, like I said, in the Janus Project, we're going to deal with a lot of issues. We're going to deal with a lot of stuff. We're going to deal with a lot of baggage. And the staple of the channel for the first few episodes is going to be what I call systematic theology for non-Christians. If you don't know what systematic theology is, systematic theology is a systematic, hence the name, study of the various parts of biblical theology. If you're paying attention, you might have noticed I just redefined the definition by using the very same words I'm trying to define. Systematic theology is a systematic study of the theology of 
of the Bible. It doesn't help much, does it? Let me, let me give you an example. In the Bible, there's a lot to say about God. That's theology. Now, Jesus Christ is also God, and so a chunk of Bible study dealing exclusively with Christ would be Christology, which is the study of Christ. If it's studying the Holy Spirit, it's pneumatology, because pneuma means spirit. Pneumatology, study of the spirit. If it's studying the doctrine of sin, it's hamartiology. If it's studying the doctrine of angels, I think you can figure this one out on your own, angelology. Study of demons, kind of neat, demonology. Okay, you see how that works? The church is known as the ecclesia, the assembly, and so the study of the church would be ecclesiology. And so what I want to do is I want to unpack some of those ideas. I want to unpack some of those principles. Now, it may sound boring at face value. It may be something that you're like, <laughs> I don't want to listen to that. But here's where it gets interesting. The influence of Christian theology has made the modern world what it is today. Now, you might look at that and go, exactly, and that's why it's such a mess. Ah, hold on. I think what we have from the Roman times all the way up till today, I think we have the issue of a mutation and an immune response. Let me explain. Coming out of the Dark Ages and coming out of the fall of Rome, leading all the way up through to the Enlightenment, you have a genuine Christianity, you have some fake Christianity, you have some tainted Christianity, and you, you have some people who are genuine believers. But the vast majority of people throughout history who have claimed to be Christians have not lived like Christians, right? At least the popular ones. Now, the, the, the millions of peasants who, who probably claim to be Christians but probably never read the Bible once because they weren't allowed to and they were illiterate anymore. Anyway. But if you look at a lot of these people <laughs> who came up through claiming to be Christian in some form or another, a lot of what they believed actually wasn't found in the Bible. And what I want to do is I want to lay out the groundwork of what makes someone a Christian. Because I want you guys to imagine, if I walked up and I said, I'm a Muslim. And you were like, oh, okay, cool. And then you're like, so what do you believe about Muhammad? I'd be like, oh, he's a false prophet. Would I be a Muslim? No. Now, you could try to make the claims that I was, but if I believe Muhammad is a false prophet, that's one of the core teachings of Islam. I'm not a Muslim. No matter how much I claim to be, I'm not a Muslim. And so there are core teachings to Christianity that you can claim to be a Christian. But if you deny those, you're not a Christian, no matter how much you claim to be. There, there's actually a girl on Twitter just a few months, a month ago, I know. And, and she, she's like, I'm a Christian, but, and she started going through a list of all the things she didn't believe. And people are like, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat meat. That's, that's what it was like. If you claim to be a Christian, but you don't believe the core teachings of what it means to be a Christian, you're not a Christian, no matter how much you claim to be. So what I want to do is, as a Christian, as someone who's studied Christianity, who's been a Christian for 20 years now, I'm closer to 30 years now, I have degrees in Christian studies, I've, I've done a lot of work in this field, I want to share with you the core values of what it is to be a Christian. First of all, so that as, if, if you're not a Christian, so you can identify someone and be like, you're not a Christian. Oh, but I am. No, you're not, because you don't believe this. But also, if you're questioning and you're looking and you're saying, I kind of want to be a Christian, how do you do that? That's an answer I want to answer. That's a question I want to answer. And so systematic theology for non-Christians is something I want to get into with you for your sake. Another part of the Janus Project that I want to get into as we go forward in this is fire chi Fireside Chats with Uncle Mike. Fireside Chats with Uncle Mike are just times where I have a fictional or not so fictional nephew or niece and I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to have a talk with them about something that's important. I'm going to have a talk with my nephew or niece about an issue going on in the world today and what do they need to know about it. What's important about it? What's something that they need to grasp? What's something that they need to learn about? I'm telling you, I went through college, I went through seminary. You learn all sorts of stuff, but you learn more just by going off on your own and doing things. And that's what I want to do. I want to talk to them about the issues of life that they need to know something about that they may not be taught that in college. You're welcome to join in. You're welcome to sit on the sidelines, be an eavesdropper on our conversation, and be part of it. And that's what we're going to have 
fireside chats with Uncle Mike. One of the parts of the Janus Project that I'm really looking forward to is book reviews. Now behind me, I have a vast array of books. Um, some historical, some theological, some science, um, some of them just straight up video games. And uh, what I hope to do in this episode, the book review uh, of the Janus Project, is I hope to take a look at some of these books behind me and go through just some of the things that you're going to see in them, some of the reasons why I would recommend them. Okay, a lot of them come from a Christian worldview. Uh, a lot of them are, are straight up that, but there are a few of these books that have nothing to do with Christianity. They're just practical guidance for life. And those are some of the books that I'll, I'll point out as we go along. Uh, obviously, the disclaimer that comes with every single book I would ever recommend, I do not recommend it wholesale. I do not agree with everything in the book. So you can look at it and say, well, I don't like this part of it. Congratulations, I might. Or I might agree with you, and then I don't like that part of it either, but the rest of the book makes it worth it. And so as we go through the book reviews, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm not gonna go over it every single time and tell you, this part of the book is bad. I'll comment on some of the things, but every single point, I'm just, I'm just not going to insult you, okay? There are going to be things in all of these books that I disagree with. There is one book that I agree with everything in. It's the Bible. That, that's it, all right? Even if I don't like it, I agree with it because it's the Bible and I'm a Christian and I believe it. It's just how it is, all right? And so that's the one book that I wholesale can recommend but there's a bunch of other books behind me that I will also cover and recommend. And so, coming up in the next few weeks, you're gonna see some book reviews here on the Janus Project. I hope you'll take a moment to read through some of these books. Really quick, let me just go through a few of the books that you're gonna see coming up soon on the Janus Project. First one, uh, in, in no particular order, Misreading Scripture with Western Eyes. I'd recommend that book. Um, Again, there are some limits to how far I think you should take the information in the book, but it is going to be a very, very good book for those of you who are hoping to understand the Christian worldview from an Eastern perspective, which is extremely important to point out to us Westerners, we don't read the Bible in its original context. We need to. Misreading Scripture with Western Eyes is going to be very good on that. Uh, along that vein, Unseen Realm by Michael Heiser. Uh, another book that I would recommend uh, has a very interesting take on a lot of what the Bible has to say. Like I said, don't agree with everything in it. I don't think I need to keep repeating that, but just to get the point across. Uh, it is, again, going to be a very good book for understanding the cultural context. Uh, modern day stuff, uh, Love Thy Body, is a very interesting take uh, on Descartes and how he has influenced the world today, all the way into the topics of homosexuality, uh, loose sexual living, um, just all the transgender stuff that you see going on around us today. All of that is gonna be addressed there in Love Thy Body. Also the abortion debate. Um, I hear a lot of really, really bad arguments coming from Christians on the abortion debate. Love Thy Body explains why those arguments are really, really terrible, but then also says, here's a deeper and better issue you can take with abortion, right? I think I am unapologetically pro-life. Be offended at that if you will. Great. Love Thy Body is an excellent source for understanding a lot of those issues. Uh, another book that's really, really great for just understanding practical life stuff, um, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Uh, just one of those books that I reread every now and then. It's just a powerful work. Uh, has a lot of very practical advice on how to live your life. All right, Jordan Peterson is not a Christian, but he's very Christian in the way he approaches a lot of things. Okay, uh, on that topic, you have another book behind me, Lost Connections. Lost Connections is a guy who's writing a book about depression, and he's showing you the nine, I believe is the number, the nine causes for depression. Again, very powerful book, something that if you want to get a copy of it and read it, and just be ready to discuss it when we finally do a book review. Uh, one of the books I want to do right before the election uh, is this book right here. It's kind of a center stage prominently on my bookshelf. Uh, it is called How Do You Kill 11, uh, 11 Million People? Yeah, um, and, and it's why the truth matters more than you think. And it's this idea of you kill people by lying. And so again, it's a very powerful look at World War II and some of the issues that were going on around World War II. How did they get the Jews to get in cattle cars and go to death camps? How did they get Christians and, and other people to shut up? And uh, again, a, a lot of it had to do with lying. So um, there, there's a very, very powerful book. Uh, there's a lot of other books on the shelves that we'll, we'll get into as we go. Um, but again, those are some of the books that will appear on the book review. I hope you'll join me. And that is some of the things that you're going to see up coming up here on the Janus Project. Now, as we close out episode one, I hope you guys are intrigued. 
I hope it's something that you guys can get behind. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you stay tuned for updates. Every now and then when I don't have a whole lot of time to put together a full episode, you might just see a little chunk of the Janus Project up here. Might be a quick little travel log, a little survival tip. Um, I, li I live in California. There are things you need to know to survive. Uh, it might be a, a fireside chat with Uncle Mike. Uh, or it just might be any combination of those things. The Janus Project, I'm hoping to be a weekly uh, channel. And so I hope you guys will join me as we go through this material. If you have questions, if you have anything you want to add, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I don't do a whole lot on Facebook anymore. Uh, you can put a comment in the, in the comment section below. Uh, if you disagree with me, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to have a discussion uh, on some of these issues. My goal is to understand your point of view as much as possible, and I hope that you would do me the service of understanding my point of view as well. Again, like this video, subscribe, share it with a friend, and uh, join me as we go forward. You will join me on the Janus Project. Again, like this video, subscribe below, hit the notification bell if you are a person who does those sort of things. But hey, I want you guys to see my videos. So like and subscribe. I hope you guys join me for the Janus Project.